Welcome everyone to another bonus episode of Play It Through, and on this episode, it's going to be Wampaku Duck Yumi Buken, known as DuckTales in Japan. Now, I covered the DuckTales games, as well as a lot of the Disney Capcom games, very early on when I started doing my Play It Through series, and I've always wanted to play them again since they're such great games. DuckTales is one of my all-time favorite games, and I figure one way I can go about doing that is by doing the Japanese versions of the games, since they're not seen as often, obviously, and that way it's a little bit different than just me replaying the North American release. One unfortunate thing is, while playing through the game, I haven't really noticed any major differences between the Japanese and North American versions of the game. There are sometimes, you know, there's differences between regions that make it stand out just a little bit, but I didn't notice anything too major. We start off, of course, in the Amazon and get used to our Pogo ability, which works the same as it does in the North American release. The bees during this part in particular have always bugged me, and I always consistently run into them, especially if I try to rush. But uh, here I want to make sure I get that one bee to kind of spawn one way so I can get to launch pad and then fly my way over to the left side. Once over here, I can uh, chase this bee that's been following me and Pogo off of him and get up here. After outrunning the rock, making sure to pogo over the spiky part, we then have the part with the, like, Amazon-esque dog guys that are throwing spears at us, as well as the giant spiders for the first time in the game. Wait for the spiders to come down, they'll then retreat, giving you plenty of opportunity, of course, to go under them once they do so. Now we're going to use the trick here, instead of using money, everyone knows this trick probably by now, that you can bounce off an enemy and get right to the vine instead of having to deal with the statue over there. After we get up here, we have to outrun all these blocks, making sure to do a very small jump onto the little block in between so that we don't end up getting hit. It's then time for the first boss of the game, which is the giant totem-like statue that moves around the room and then slowly does big arcing jumps, and when it lands, it'll cause the ground to shake, so you gotta make sure you jump in the air at the same time. After delivering five hits to him, just like all the bosses, he goes down and we get our first treasure and complete the first stage of the game. One of the things that always made DuckTales awesome was just the fact that you could do the levels in any order. Of course, once you completed all the levels, then you had to go to the final kind of showdown at Transylvania, but at the same time, you could still do any of the other levels in whatever order you preferred. And actually, when I was speedrunning and learning the game how to speedrun it, I actually would usually start with the moon because it had the trickier glitches you could do uh, to speed up the run, and I would use that and kind of get that done. And if I was able to get through the moon quickly, that means I had a good chance of doing the rest of the levels pretty easily, considering I didn't use really anything major at the time to run through those. Transylvania is a very maze-like level with some mirrors that teleport you around the area, reaching the teleporter that we did through the hidden wall, allows us to go through this hallway which takes us to Magicka Dispel, the boss for Transylvania, well, the first boss for Transylvania as we have to deal with Dracula Duck later on. Magicka, of course, one of the most popular characters from the DuckTales cartoon, she'll turn into her Vulture Raven like form and fly around before crashing back down into her human form or duck form, whatever you want to consider it. Uh, and then she'll fire out lightning bolts. When she does land with the lightning bolts, if you get behind her, they won't be able to hit you, and you usually have just a second or so to hit her before she ends up going back up into the air. And then you're kind of at her mercy as far as what flight level she's at that you'll be able to do the pogo and jump up enough to end up hitting her. One thing I'm not going to be grabbing in the game is the second extra piece of health in Transylvania. I will be getting the one in the Himalayas, and I'll be getting the hidden treasures here in the African Mines and in the Moon level. When you first make it to the African Mines, though, you can't go through without having the key in Transylvania. To get the key, you go right back into Transylvania into the first mirror, and you're right there with the giant chest that contains the key to the African Mines, and then you can go through the other warp and go back to the selection screen and go to the mines. The mines contain three giant chests for you to find. Two have extra lives, and one has one of the hidden treasures, and I'll actually showcase where the two extra live ones are. The first one is over here to the left, going through the wall. You'll find the first giant chest that has an extra life, and then just to the left of it, go down here and then jump towards the left wall, causing these chests to spawn. But don't bounce on them until you get enough there that you'll be able to bounce off of them and over this wall to the other giant chest that contains an extra life. Those lives are key, because if you end up running out of lives in the game, it is game over, and you have to start all the way over from the beginning. So I highly recommend if you're playing the game uh, for the first time, you, you know, need some practice at it, definitely grab those extra lives. 
There's a few other ones throughout the game as well, but those are too easy to get a hold of ones. Do a little bit of backtracking and go up here after watching out for that giant boulder. You have to bounce across these enemies here. There's another giant chest right in your way, and this one contains the hidden treasure for the mines. And once we have that, we're going to go down the chain just to the right of it, and this puts us on path towards the boss. Try to sneak off of the ledge so the bat doesn't end up hitting you. Pass a couple of the slugs, and then it's time to battle the boss of the level. Bounce on his head, he'll then roll around the room, and when he gets back to the center, he'll form again, so you'll be able to jump off of his head once again. Usually I do a little short jump right before he teleports, and this usually prevents him from coming my direction, but either way, that jump also allows me to kind of get out of the way, because he can go either left or right when he's doing his rolling part. So always be prepared to go either way uh, if you need to go over him or just kind of wait for him to come back to you. That is now three of the levels done. There's a total of five levels, and then you go back to Transylvania. The fourth stage of the game is the Himalayas, which is one of my favorites because I've always been a big fan of snow-themed stages in classic platformers. You can pogo yourself off of a few enemies as well as chests, but if you pogo into the snow, you end up getting stuck for a little bit. I love the goat enemies. I don't know what it is. Just their sprite work I always thought was pretty cool. So I've always liked the goats in this stage, even if they can be a bit tough to jump on because of the way they bounce. Now fall down this giant pit, you'll fall down multiple layers. Do not go left yet if you want the extra piece of health, but if you want to get to the end right away, you can hold left there and land on that platform, and you'll make it to where the boss will be. As you'll see, that's where we'll have to go in just a moment. Over here, you pretty much can't avoid the conversation, but it basically says Bubba is trapped in ice and you need to help him, and Bubba is the caveman. Uh, who was featured, or Cave Duck that was featured in episodes of DuckTales. And over here to the left, we're going to push this against the wall, then bounce off of it to free Bubble from the ice. He thanks us, and then bust down the wall to give us one of the two extra pieces of health. Like I said, the other one is in Transylvania. I'll point it out, but I, I won't be grabbing it in the run. Very easy to get to, though, if you do want to get that other extra health. Once we have that, though, we have to do some backtracking and work our way back over to the right, past the pit that ended up leading us down into this area. Just past that is another spider. Like always, the spiders wait for them to descend and then retreat before you attempt to go past them. Bounce up here and take the rope up and head to the left, watching out for another spider, and then jumping up here for more spider goodness. Now you're going to pass the hole that we first originally had come down. Like I mentioned, if you had hugged left, this is where you would have ended up being. And this leads us to the exit towards where the boss is located and out of the uh, mountain cave here. Climb up this rope. Watch out for the boulder by jumping over to the left side and waiting for the boulder to pass, and then continue climbing up. Ignore the beagle boy over to the left side and get to this moving platform, ride it all the way across, and thankfully it's easy to do so. And you're now at the uh, abominable snowman fight, or yeti fight. He bounces around, stopping in the center, then doing another big jump over to the far left or right wall, depending on what direction he's doing, and then he'll punch the wall, causing little snowballs or giant ice balls to fall down from the ceiling, in which case, if you get hit, of course, they're going to do some damage. After you deliver five hits, though, he will go down, and we move on to the fifth and final level of the game. One of the most well-known things about DuckTales, even if you've never played the game but you're a fan of retro gaming, you've probably heard the level theme for the moon. It's one of the best songs of all time. Some people may say it's even overrated at this point because it's so well-known, but the entire soundtrack to DuckTales was extremely well done. And the soundtrack for DuckTales 2 isn't that bad either, even if the game isn't as finely remembered. Now, in the moon level, we have to find a couple of things. We have to find a key that unlocks a room that contains the remote control for... RoboDuck, which we're going to get the key right here to the left. The remote control will allow us to have RoboDuck show up and blow open a hole that will allow us to get to the boss of the stage, which is actually underground from where we started. Once we have the key, we're going to go back down and head over to the right, dropping down back to the first room. This is where we first started off when we got into like the ship here on the moon. Over to the right, we got to watch out for some of these aliens. They're a bit hard to dodge because it's pretty small quarters that you're dealing with. Once you get up the rope, climb up the next rope or chain onto this room and then head over to the left. Go through the opening here and grab the remote. Watch out, of course, for the aliens, though usually I get hit once you're trying to get in quickly and escape. 
once you have that in your possession, you can go and exit the level if you want to go into the boss. But if you want a little extra hidden treasure, head up the rest of the chain and bounce your way over here. It's probably the toughest of the bouncing you have to do in the game. None of the platform is really particularly difficult in DuckTales, but when you make it over here, you'll find the other special hidden treasure in the game. Now that you have that, head back on down. We're gonna drop down a couple of floors. Once back here, now we're gonna head over to the left so we can get back down to the moon's surface. If you're wondering about the money in the game, it's actually used to get one of the endings. There's actually three endings, though one is almost never seen whatsoever, and that's ending the game with zero money. If you want to run around the game and get over $10 million, you will get a slightly different ending, though it really isn't that big of a change. I usually end up just going for the normal, standard ending. In order to get all that money, though, you have to pretty much search every nook and cranny in the game and find a lot of the hidden treasures that just kind of pop out out of everywhere. When we make it to the far right on the moon's surface, it blows up in the hole that we go down here, watching out for some Beagle Boys before facing off with the giant rat here. Now, for a little trick, if you bounce and time it just right and do not move, once you're in this position, don't move left or right and just keep bouncing, most of the time, you can defeat the boss without ever having to move or get out of the way of its movements. This is one of those tricks that I've learned over the years. It doesn't work every time, you have to kind of make sure you're in the exact right positioning, but if you do, you have yourself a cakewalk of a battle. Once we make it back and the score is tallied up, or our money is tallied up, we now get to go into the final level of the game, which is going back through Transylvania in order to confront uh, Scrooge's rival Glomgold, as well as get our treasures back. Now, when you climb up this rope and head over to the right, we take out a couple of these mummy ducks and then go up a rope. But if you actually go to the far right and continue that way, that's the location of the other hidden piece of health. Instead, though, of course, we're going to head just right back to that boss chamber and do the battle against Dracula Duck, who pretty much works as the main boss. The final little extra thing at the end just has you racing Glomgold up a rope. Now, for the Dracula Duck fight, I'm going to start off by doing a couple little jumps here uh, with the pogo and time it just right, so I'm able to hit him a couple of times uh, before he disappears the first time. But don't do this unless you have extra health to kind of spare. When he teleports around the room and he throws out a bat, do not jump when the bat first comes out. Wait for the bat to descend all the way and then start floating towards you. This will allow you to have it on a good plane of sight that you'll be able to then bounce off of it and jump up the hit Dracula Duck. Once he is done, we're going to head to the left side and wait for Glomgold to show up with Magicka. Magicka is going to try to raise him up into the air and try to get to the treasure chest before us, but we're going to grab the rope, climb up very, very quickly, and then jump on the chest in order to finish the game and enjoy the ending. If you miss it and he gets it first, you just get set back. Basically, you lose a life and then have to come back into this part. So, there you have it. That is the ending to DuckTales. Now, if you're interested in the bad ending, you can get it regularly. Basically, there is a trick that you can actually use to get health back, which actually costs money. And because of this, you can use that at your disposal to make sure that you're at zero money at the very end. But it's a very, very difficult thing to actually pull off. The ending, though, for this version, pretty much, I assume, remains mostly the same. Obviously, it's Japanese text, so I'm not sure exactly what's being said here, but I'm sure it's similar in some regard. One thing that's funny, though, is after getting all the dialogue from Huey, Dewey, and Louie, it then goes to Uncle Scrooge, and he just has Dream and Friends that he's saying at the very end. That's the only part of the game that's in English, uh, and that's kind of really funny that they decided to have that there, and then the end ends up coming up at the bottom. But... There you go, guys. That is DuckTales, the Japanese version on the Famicom. And with that, it's going to wrap up this episode of Play It Through. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, consider giving it a thumbs up or commenting down below. If you enjoyed this playthrough, be sure to check out some of the other recent ones I just did, including Vice Project Doom, one of the underrated action games on the NES, or for something a little bit different, the Godzilla Monster of Monsters. The first Godzilla game, not the best, a lot of repetitiveness, but still pretty cool to see. 
I also, of course, need to thank all the members of my Patreon. Without your guys' continued support, I wouldn't be able to keep doing what I'm doing, so thank you all so, so much. But anyway, guys, thank you again for watching, and of course, I hope you enjoyed.